Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching and in this video I'm going to take you through how I've done my first Nurgle Knight. All the damaged paintwork, cracked armour, Nurgle pustules, embedded skulls and all those cool kind of Nurgly things you can see on the model here. And I say it's first Nurgle Knight because this is going to be a series of three videos that link together three knights that I'm making, each in different stages of kind of Nurgleization and demonic possession. If you've watched the channel before, I recently did an unboxing video of the Forge World Knight Asterius, and I'll be doing that at some point later on the channel. And I talked on there about how a friend of mine has bought a Warlord Titan from Forge World, and I'm building up a force to take that down. So we're doing a big 10,000 point game next year, and I'm now sort of starting the army to add on to my Death Guard to get to that kind of point. So I've bought the Canis Rex model, I bought the Chaos Knight model, Miasmic Malignifier, uh, and also the Glockkin model. And the idea is I'm going to be using these models, um, all different pieces from different ones and different techniques, to merge together to make a series of three knights, which I will be showing you kind of on the channel. Now I'm starting off with the first one as the kind of recently turned knight. So although it is going to look obviously Nurgle, as you've seen, it is going to maintain all its kind of imperial weaponry, those type of things. So the, the chaosification of this will be through converting the actual imperial model rather than having very overtly demonic parts and things on it which i will do with the later knights so to start with it's a standard build um, and i've literally gone through it and i've just built the kit exactly as you would if you were going to make this imperial but what i have done slightly differently is when i'm building it taking into account areas that i may want to convert to add the nurgle symbols onto or you know um, put pustules and that kind of thing on and so i've not um stuck them together so as i've been going i've not been sticking the armor panels to the legs that type of thing so you can see here i've kept all the armor panels off i've kept um the top pad carapace off and anything that i can you know keep in separate parts so the reason being is you see here this is a um, warhound titan panel and there's a lot of damage on there and a lot of scratches and scuffs and that kind of thing and that was what i set out with thinking that's what i want to do with the panels and it's a lot easier to do that if you keep the panels off the model than it is to try and gouge up and convert on the model because you'll end up potentially damaging the part it's stuck to so just for a bit of maneuverability now stage one here you can see all i'm doing is taking a hobby knife a really sharp hobby knife with a sort of new blade so there's less chance of it sticking and you're hurting yourself and i'm just going around and gouging those panels so just putting some light indents on the facings of the panel the kind of solid edges where you've got those real defined um lines just shaving some down a little bit not going too crazy but just taking a little bit of that off now on different panels i might do more or less of this and on this particular panel i'm taking off the imperial sort of symbology that runs up um, the front of this panel so sort of damaging it a little bit as though it's battle damaged although it's the or the start of the chaos conversion now if you look on the warhound that i flashed up very briefly it's got the imperial symbol still on there and a bit of damage so i'm kind of mirroring the warhound effect when you, we look to the chaos knight which we'll be doing on a video soon you can see that these imperial symbols have actually been mutated and changed so now what I'm doing is I'm just taking a pin vise with a nice wide uh, drill bit on and just drilling some holes in there. Now you could do this with your knife and continue just to gouge it, but it's actually easier sometimes to drill into the plastic, don't go right the way through, um, and then just run your knife around that circumference of that hole you've drilled and to widen it out. And that's the sort of represent what you've seen in the Warhound. Um, it sort of represents shot damage. You know, this might be where it was shot by a Nurgle weapon and that sort of started the mutation now what i'm doing and this isn't for this build but what this is is this is for the build that will be the third in the series so i'm taking some of the armor panels and i'm casting them up with some green stuff world blue stuff um, and I, you won't see these again until we come to the third really mutated build and then why i've done this might make some sense now this is for this build though so i'm taking the glockkin model that you've already seen and taking some blue stuff um, and just pushing it onto the kind of pustule areas and things on that glock in and the areas that look really nice that I think I might want to incorporate that onto this night. Now, if you don't know what blue stuff is, I'll link a video down below um, where I do a full talk through of how to use this, how to cast parts up, etc., for converting Warhammer models. But essentially, this is a material that you heat up in boiling water. It goes really soft then. You press it onto anything you want to mold, like you can see here. And then when it's dried and it's cooled down, you then push green stuff or milliport or something like that into the mold you've created created and it will give you an exact replica of what's underneath now i just use it for little parts in general um just to really convert up the model now now i'm putting these armor panels on so i've made the uh, blue stuff mold you can see here for 
these armor panels which we won't talk about again until video three um, these panels being cast up to use on the really demonic night that we're going to do later on um, but now that the molds have set and i'm sort of happy with them what i'm then doing is building the rest of this model and i will put these armor panels on shortly um just a bit of a pause here as ever because come to the weapon stage and realized oh yeah the melter gun that's on the carapace needs uh, its barrel drilling out that's not something you have to do this but it does add a certain level of realism or, or nicety to the model when you do so i've taken the end of my hobby knife stabbed the very middle of the barrel and that gives a guide hole for your pin bit or your drill bit to go in now i only drill maybe two three millimeters into it you could go the full length of the barrel but to be fair it's just about the effect and impact and it definitely adds you know something nice to the model now I'm continuing the build here. Now some people will be horrified now because I'm sticking the arms on. Some people like to magnetise the weapons. So you can have a variety of options. This is something I've done before, and I have magnetised, you know, full arms and weapons on to give some optional um, extras onto a model. But in this case, because I'm building a number of knights, I want them all specifically, you know, fixed together. Um, and that's just how I want to do it in this case. But if you were doing a single knight, you might want to consider, you know, magnetization to give you multiple options. So I continue to build. Um, I've not stuck his waist down at this point, and I was considering keeping them separate for ease of transport. Uh, my Imperial Knights are separate at the middle, and I do magnetize the waist. Actually, that's one thing I do magnetize um, to keep them there. But I, I felt actually I'm just going to glue the thing together and keep it in one pose. Um, so now I'm sticking on these armor panels that I cast up with the blue stuff. So just showing you that, you know, once you've made this cast, you can then use those models. Now here is the bit that we are using in this build. So these are the casts off the Glockin models. You can see here a really nice triple um, kind of pustule Nurgle symbol um, and lots of other pieces that work sort of really nicely. When you take them out of the molds, you end up here. I've put a very, very thin layer of this green stuff. So these are quite pliable. And the idea now is I'm gonna take what we've cast up and use it on the model. So I'm gonna show you here on the shield this kind of triple Nurgle symbol that's somewhere on the Glockin is what I kind of want to use on the shield as the kind of heraldry for this model. So I've taken this very thin layer of green stuff. It's maybe about a millimeter. So it's easy to cut, it's easy to bend. Now I'm then just using a craft knife to cut this down to the size that it will fit neatly on the shield. Now apologies here, I'm going off camera a few times but I've kept as much as I can realistically see. Um, so now put some super glue down on the shield and then press this imprint of green stuff down into that super glue use the edge of a knife or you know pliers or a file or whatever to just press that down so there's no air bubbles and then that will seal onto the plastic and then i've continued taking other parts that i've cast up and using these in various areas on the model you can see here i've used it on the uh, shoulder panel you can see another piece i've put on there with the really big pustules on the kind of top carapace then i go around the model and just put on a number of these green um, stuff cast up pieces now we've got to try and blend it into the model because they're quite stark even the millimeter does give a bit of a bump up to where these things are so i've taken some liquid green stuff which is something that games workshop sells and just use a very old brush dip it in and then splodge it there's no more technical term than that around where you've put on these cast up green stuff pieces and you're almost building a step from the normal panel up to this cast up piece there will be another step we're going to do later to blend it in a bit more but go around and do this now what you could also do if you don't want to buy liquid green stuff if you get um, poly cement not the stuff in a tube you can get it in like a little glass pot with a brush um, drop a load of pieces of plastic sprue in there till it melts down and you can do that and that is effectively what liquid green stuff is in a sense it's just you know this is melted down green stuff you can do the same thing with melted down plastic if you want to do that but i find liquid green stuff is really convenient to buy it's a couple of quid uh, and this pot it will last quite a long while so you can see we've blended it in on the armor panels where we've put those cast up pieces of pustule and things but what we're also then doing is i'm going around on the rest of the model and just adding on bumps of this liquid green stuff and just stabbing it dotting it on to give a bit of texture and then the idea is is this maybe where the nurgle infection is coming from so the idea is maybe there's a, the nurgle infection starts where these bumpy areas are maybe where a bit of damage is and then it sort of pustulizes and bursts out onto the model now what i've done we sprayed it black and then we sprayed it with a lead belcher spray and now we're on to the painting stage before we put any what you would call real paint on what we're now doing is using one of the games workshop technical paints the grell and earth and what this does is when it dries it cracks and fractures now i'm painting this again on the edge of where those green stuff panels are to almost give another gradation between 
um, where the green stuff bits are and where we've put the liquid green stuff and kind of bumped up the surface. Now this will hopefully make it look like these pustules and this neutralization kind of thing is bursting through the armor, cracking the armor um, and sort of starting the transformation of, of this model. So I'm just using a little spatula type thing that Games Workshop sell and smearing it on a, a thinnish layer um, around where those green stuff parts are. Um, and I'm not using it anywhere else other than there because again, that's the effect I want. I want it to look like the paint is cracking as it bursts through. Now we're onto the real painting stage, as you would call the traditional paint. Now I was going to split this up into two different painting guides and keep it sort of 10 minutes apart to a build and a paint video. But actually the paint scheme is kind of integral into making the build work. So if you're going to use your own colors, you know, it wouldn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense. So speaking of colors, any colors I use and everything will be down in the description of the video. So check that out. I'll also put some links down there to blue stuff and various other pieces you might want to use to do this build. So in this, I'm taking a brass color and um, this is a retributor armor and I'm doing the rims and ridges of all the panels exactly like you would if you were painting it any kind of normal night. I am skipping the parts where I've put the liquid green stuff over onto the metal and you can see here just under the pustule. Now I'm taking a very pallid kind of flesh color and doing all those areas that we've cast up because these are the areas that are the beginnings of that kind of demonic possession. We want to do this so it looks a bit like skin. Now two thoughts of where you can put the flesh color, whether you want to go onto the agrelin earth or not. Now, the agrelin earth has thoroughly dried now. So I'm actually drifting onto the agrelin earth with this, but then we'll go back over it again with the, uh, the, the later colors anyway. But you drift out onto that agrelin earth, that is fine. Um, and I've even here drifted this flesh color out onto what you would class as the metal um, brass areas that we've done here. So again, the mutation is covering over and starting to eat away at the kind of uh, the actual metal brass parts as well as the metal of the basic armor. So we're working through there. Now you could do this all different colors. I wanted to go for quite a um, bilious skin color, if that's even a word, kind of a very rotten, dead kind of skin color, but you could do it quite vibrant if you wanted. If you're wanting to do these techniques for, for example, a Zinch um, Knight, you could do the same with a very vibrant color. It wouldn't just have to be Nurgle. Now the pustules I'm picking with a nice vibrant yellow. This matches into my Death Guard army. So if you saw the very quick shot at the start, I've done a Death Guard Demon Prince, I've done a few Death Guard squads, and all the pustules and things I've done on those uh, troop models, I've done in kind of the yellow, and I've used a, like a bright pink color for kind of tentacles and things. So I wanted to use the same color palette on the night that I did for the Nurgle models, and it really will hopefully blend the army together. And I know in game terms, you know, Imperial Knights and Death Guard are two separate armies, I've realized that, but what we've said in the big game we're doing is, as long as your detachment hits 3,000 points, you can keep all your rules and we won't lose it from that kind of soup army effect. So I want the color schemes to match so this looks like a whole Nurgle host. So now I've talked about the pink on the tentacles before that I've done on my normal Death Guard. So that's what we're doing here. So the actual tentacle on the um, face uh, head area here is actually from one of the cast up pieces that I did. There was a part that happened to have a tentacle on it and I thought, oh, that's quite nice. So I sliced that out and had a little tentacle coming out sort of above the face plate there. And the um, on the top carapace, there's a, there's a piece that I cast that had a lot of kind of um, veins and what looked like innards coming out. So I used it on the top part and again, painted that up. Quite a quick little pick out here of some bone color. Quite a lot of skulls on the Glockin model kind of embedded into the skin. And I really liked that. And this one piece here I've cast particularly was a piece where there was three skulls almost laid out like the Nurgle kind of triangle. So I, I used that and it actually looks really nice on that kind of shoulder panel. So just picking it out with a bit of bone. And really the final um, color color here is the red on what are the barrels of the Melter weaponry. And some last details here, picking out the black on all the cables, pipe work, that type of thing that's around there, just to sort of um, differentiate them from the metal color that we're leaving on the rest of the model. Now, I suppose talking about why I sprayed lead belcher, I sprayed lead belcher because it's actually really useful, especially on a model this big, we're gonna leave an awful lot of this model just showing as bare metal. So it saves an awful lot of time rather than dry brushing it up yourself from black. But what it also does is when I'm painting things like here, where we're painting the actual Death Guard green onto the model, we can leave areas with that metal showing through and it will help add to the rusty battered effect that we kind of go for when we're doing Death Guard. I think it's a brilliant base color to use. Um, any kind of metallic spray definitely saves you some time when the bulk of your model or even 
quite a lot of parts your model are going to be metal so it definitely works here so now we're taking the death guard green and this is where we'll then pull the rest of the model together so you can see here we're just painting it on nothing fancy here we're trying to put a little bit of texture into the model at parts so you will see i'm using a, a relatively old brush and at parts here i'm sort of stabbing the paint on when we get to those areas of cracked armor where that agrax earth shade has kind of gone um, but in general we're just now painting the rest of the model whenever i'm doing it obviously being really neat and tidy around the brass areas that we don't want to get any green onto but painting around these skin areas uh, and the kind of mutated areas just blending it in a little bit and going slightly onto the skin a little bit more in some a little bit less in others and also as i said before leaving some metal showing around where we've gouged and battle damaged those panels and then that will add to the rusty nurgle effect later on as you'll see with the next level of techniques and on to the next technique, doing one of my favourites here. This is the Dirty Wash layer. And I'm using a very mucky sepia ink wash that Vallejo do. Now, any sepia style wash will be fine. You don't use like a pinky hued wash or anything like that. You want a, a dirty earth toned or sepia toned wash for this kind of effect to work. Because what it does is it takes the metal that you've done and muckies it up, makes it look a bit rusty and whatever. And it also ties together the other colours that we've used. Very good for most 40k actually because we're, it's a grim dark game system you wouldn't do this on you know if you're doing a fantasy game on elves that you wanted to be clean and bright and shiny but for most of 40k this kind of style of wash really works so when you're putting it on be careful not to let it pool too much in any areas if it does just use the brush to move it around and this is the effect you'll get when it's dry still a fair bit of work to do here but you can see where we're going now with, with that kind of final effect now what we're going to do now is take all the colors we've already used and use these now as a highlight layer so because we've put that wash over it it's totally changed the tones of these original colors and actually by using the same colors on top it looks like we've put a totally different color on and you get multiple layers of tones and highlights showing through so i'm working on the skin tone here now you can see i am using a sort of slight dry brush technique here because you don't want to just paint it straight on because you will just obscure all the wash layer and that kind of thing that we've done so a little bit of paint onto the brush i'm using a bit of tissue here just to rub a lot of that paint off and then very lightly go over those areas and dry brush that on i suppose at some point i should do a dry brush video if you don't know what dry brushing is but i think hopefully that's explained it enough so you know what dry brushing is um i will try and do a technique video maybe at some point so now going around all the skin areas and just dry brushing that on now don't be too concerned um if you get it onto the pustules and things at this stage the key bit now is to just and be as clean and tidy as possible now each layer you do on top of this first layer you're doing with the skin you need to be more and more careful because what you don't want to do is you know end up putting the paint onto a layer you've already gone back over so the first thing i did was choose to do the flesh because then we'll do the pustules on top and then in theory we're done and we're safe if you did the pustules first you would then have a hard time doing this flesh dry brush so when you're doing this next stage just think about and when you're doing any stage of any painting think about what's going to go next so you know don't do the raised areas first if you're then going to do something underneath you know skin pustule next and then whatever because otherwise you have to be super super careful when you're doing the next stage so work through the flesh tones and then you see here i'm just now working on the green i've chosen to do it in that sense because again if i slip or make a mistake um the green going on to the pustules I'd need to fix, so the green going onto the metal I'd need to fix. So I thought this is the next one to do because then if I make any mistakes, I can clean up the next area. But green going onto the skin won't be a problem because it will be almost a mutation coming through the metal. So that's why I chose to do it in this order. So again, I'm using now one of the fat dry brushes. This is an Arby Painter um, style one, which I, again, I have done a video on these before. Quite a nice, useful dry brush. I find the round headed dry brushes a lot easier to use and blend um, paints in than I do the traditional square dry brushes but that's a personal preference a lot of people use makeup brushes as well so you could go for that we can see here I'm using very very small amounts of paint actually going down onto here you can see I'm going over the same areas multiple multiple times and when you're doing a dry brushing technique it is much better to keep taking your time now you can already see the tonal difference on that panel to the top but you can also see it's taken me a fairly long time to actually do it on one panel and I'm still not finished so what I'm doing here is really looking at where the wash might have dried streaky and concentrating my efforts there whilst making sure not again not to go too heavy and just to take your time you know the worst thing at this point would be to put too much paint on your brush go on and just 
batter that panel. So now I'm doing the same thing, but with the metal, as you can see, using the dry brush technique again, taking most of that paint off onto that piece of tissue, and then just working on those metal areas. But again, small, slightly smaller dry brush here and being super careful. Now we're on to the detailing. So picking out that yellow onto those pustule areas and just going round and this is, I'm actually painting this on. This isn't dry brushing, so I'm painting this on, but being careful not to hit the, the sort of sunken areas where the pustule's going into the skin. I wanna leave that kind of showing just the raised areas. And a similar thing on the skulls. I'm just working on the raised areas. And it wasn't until doing this paint scheme here that I realized all these skulls have actually got little branded symbols into their forehead. So actually picking just the raised areas, just the areas where the sun would hit, really brought those symbols to life for me on that model. So that was, you know, actually quite interesting to see that that was cast in there because I didn't notice and you wouldn't notice if you weren't careful doing um, your paint scheme. So now quick finish off with the tentacles. Now on to the final technical stages. I'm using a contrast Majos purple here onto all the areas that are the sort of beginnings of the demonic possession. So all the areas we use the liquid green stuff, whether that's on the armor panels or whether that's on the metal areas at the backs. I'm not using this like a wash. I'm just using it to put some low lights and things in, um, in the cracks in between um, the join lines where the armor might meet the kind of flesh color and this will really make it look a bit more bruised and diseased and sort of nurglified. Moving on now to a Nurgle's rot and I'm dropping this onto all the yellow pustules that we've used or any kind of sunken areas so we should have a multi-tone effect on that skin you can see here bruised diseased looking flesh uh, where it looks like the Nurgle's possession has started then these pustules come through and the Nurgle's rot comes out. We want to make the brass areas look old and aged as well like it's not cared for so we're using some nylac oxide and just dropping that principally onto the rivets and things because that's where it seems to work just to give an aged effect onto the brass but you can go you know as much or as little as you like of this across the model as you see fit and now we're going to make it look even rustier so we're taking a rust wash which is Vallejo paint and dropping this onto areas that you may see a little bit more wear and tear and rust on the models trying to drag it um, down. Now, you don't have to do this stage, to be fair. It doesn't make a massive difference, but actually putting it on just gives another tone onto the older metal areas of this model. And I'm probably covering maybe at most 25% of the metal areas with this. And it just gives a depth of, of colour uh, on here. So this probably really is an optional stage well quite a lot of this build is optional obviously um but it just gives multiple colors and the more colors you can put on the better so now a super quick way of making any areas whether that be melters or vents or anything look quite effective three shades we're going to use the first we're using is a drooky violet you can see here we put it on um, the vents and the guns and we went probably three quarters uh, maybe to 80 percent of the way down all the vents and shades then we're going around with drakenhof nightshade wash doing that probably half of it and then finishing off with a bit of null oil just on the very raised areas and that will give a triple toned effect across the vents um, the guns etc so you can see here it looks quite a nice effect now i am not waiting for the previous stages to dry when i do this i'm letting it kind of all blend together but it's just a quick and simple way to give that burnt effect on the models so there we go back to the original video of the finished article I think it's a really nice effect what we've done. Uh, gonna do some zoomed in shots here and it really does make a difference. Cracked armor, pustules bursting out of the skin, the beginnings of that Nurgle mutation. And if you've liked this, obviously I said before, this is the first of three nights that we'll be doing. So keep an eye on the channel um, and you'll see the second night's gonna be more mutated and the third and so on. And again, check all the links down below for links to all the videos I've talked about and also there'll be some links down there for uh, some of the equipment and kit I've used. Check me out on Instagram, Adam's Hobby Stuff, and Facebook the same, and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon.